I have to tell you, I am just bursting uh, with excitement to be in front of you today. If someone had said to me earlier this year, Cindy, you're going to get to tell the story of something you created at Genentech IT that's so special to you. You're going to get to share that at the Greater Good Science Center day on bringing gratitude into the workplace. I would have been like, no way. <laughs> that is not going to happen. So um, I'm especially excited to share with you the story uh, that goes over many years. Um, and it starts with a catalyst, uh, something that happened inside of our company, inside our culture, and with our team. I'll talk to you about that. I'll talk to you about uh, some beliefs that we had, our culture, what my team did to thrive during some pretty tough times, and the benefits that came as a result of us really leading through gratitude. And I did leave Genentech actually last December, so toward the end of my talk, I'll give you a sneak uh, peek into some things I'm doing now to really carry forward uh, that banner around gratitude in the workplace. So my story really begins in 2007 when I joined Genentech as a senior director in IT. And I, like so many other people, joined Genentech because of its mission, meeting unmet medical needs, to be part of a great place to work that was changing the lives of patients or those that perhaps would be are suffering from a disease down the road. And Genentech, as Jesse said, is widely known to be one of the best places to work, recognized by Fortune, best place to work consistently. In fact, this year, again, recognized as the, as the number six best place to work. And what drew us all together was our passion for the patient, whether it was working on medicines for cancer, multiple sclerosis, hemophilia, Alzheimer's, wet macular degeneration, it was an amazingly broad portfolio that we were working on in order to benefit patients. So we were all minding our own business, and one day, uh, shortly after I joined in uh, July of 2008, news hit the wire that Roche was going to buy the, the uh, remaining 44% of Genentech. So a 100-year-old Swiss pharma giant was going to acquire Genentech, the leader and creator of the biotech industry in the US and in the Silicon Valley. And that was now what we were all going to be focused on. And for the next, actually, uh, nine months, it was an incredibly public and contentious conversation, I'll say, uh, about how that transaction was actually going to be done or not done. So we were all already had moved from like complete certainty, great place to work, to oh my gosh, what is going to happen now? So an incredible storm of change, of transition, of question, uh, really was upon us for not only those nine months, but for two years after the transaction was final, as we began to settle in to what it meant to really be one extremely large company. So at the same time we were reprinting our business cards, we were reconciling enormously full pipelines of new molecules and therapies, we were also dealing with some very practical, uh, almost biology issues, human biology, which was we were now working with folks that were eight hours away from us in a whole other continent, right? And so now our days were starting at 5 a.m. in the morning in California, and the Swiss day was ending at 8 p.m. at night. And that, that was really hard on people. And you think the simplest things are, can just make a huge difference. And so granted that the uh, acquisition brought a lot of financial uh, upside for, for many of the employees, the truth was, that we were starting to get exhausted. We were starting to get, uh, lose, you know, kind of our own sleep around some of this. We were dealing with complexity that we hadn't dealt with before, turning local processes into global processes, things that took two people now took 20 people. And so that was really, try, really tapping into our reserves around gratitude 
and really starting to challenge our great place to work. So about that time, uh, our most senior IT leader decided to leave. And um, I was immediately put into the role to lead IT for the Americas as well as Genentech. And I was literally sitting in meetings uh, during these incredibly important and tough times, in these meetings, walking in the hall, listening to folks, watching people. And it was almost like the bubble over every person's head said, should I stay or should I go? And it didn't come with a good tune. <laughs> so, because I wanted to be singing that song, but it was, uh, it was such a visceral feeling. And so, um, you know, when I look back at um, what we had to do, what was necessary in that moment, and how we navigated that question together, it started actually quite simply. And it started with me. I needed to say, what I was going to do, right? And it started me, with me being very clear and saying thank you. Thank you to everybody in the organization for making it this far, to be honest. And thank you for coming to work every day at 5 a.m. and getting on that phone call with Switzerland or Poland or Spain. Because I believed that this was still the best place to work. I believed in our company, I believed in our team, and I believed that IT was going to play an immensely important part going into the future around personalized medicine as healthcare and technology really began to come together. And so I was saying all these very motivating things at an all hands meeting, and I'll never forget the day that um, someone had the courage to just raise their hand in a huge all-hands meeting. They're very well attended when you're in tumultuous times, by the way. Uh, raises his hand and he says very simply, Cindy, are you going to leave us too? And so in that moment, you know, a million things flashed through my head and through my heart and I said, no. What I know for sure is that I am meant to be here with all of you in this most important moment, so we're together. And the other thing I knew for sure was that what happened going forward could not rest upon me alone. Then in fact, I needed to really get in touch with the passion and purpose and potential of everyone inside the entire organization. So what I really did in order for us to um, ignite that sense of community and really challenge us during this moment the, was for us to be better than we could ever be before. So how could we look behind us and not, not really you know, yearn for those days, but learn from them, but how could we reimagine and reignite our own passion that in fact the best days were ahead of us? And so I use the wishy as, uh, that's what my kids call it, it's a dandelion. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> but I actually anchored on this vision, that in fact, it was going to be up to all of us, not just me, but in fact everyone, to reignite that passion, that courage, and that intention um, across the entire organization. Because what I knew to be true was that it was going to take literally all of us to make this happen, to get through this time. So as much as they wanted to know if I was going to stay, I needed to know if they were going to stay. And were they going to keep bringing their best self to work every single day? So we started asking some pretty difficult questions of one another. We asked each other, well, why am I here? And it, it harkens back to, I don't know if any, many of you have read Alice in Wonderland, but if you remember, there's a very poignant question in there of who are you? And I really played on that to ask the community, well, why am I here? Because I think we needed to ground in that in order to move forward. I asked them, what are you passionate about? 
because I believed that we needed to have these conversations out loud to figure out where we were going to go into the future. So these are quite difficult questions to navigate uh, a 550-person organization through, and not an easy question to answer, not only at work, but perhaps in your own life, right? And to have the opportunity to do that together. And that's what really led us to this springboard framework and journey around bringing an attitude of gratitude into our workplace. So there were some amazing pieces of our culture and of our community that we stood upon in order to now launch into this next part around really realizing an attitude of gratitude at work. So we, uh, inside of IT, as Jesse shared, had our own accolades. Yes, Genentech was a great place to work, but IT was also recognized by Computer World as one of the best places to work in IT. And so we had done a lot of work around whole person development. Uh, we had done a lot of work around mindfulness, accountability. We had a phenomenal program around skills and qualities that people could work on not, not only to be a better version of themselves at work, but to be a better version of themselves just in life in general. As I shared with you, we had a mantra called Say It Out Loud. And um, one of the most beautiful things about that is that is what helped us really navigate the hard conversations. So when there, things were getting in our way, or tough times, or tough conversations, or rumors, or gossip, or anxiety, we were using say it out loud uh, as much as we were using this notion around passion and gratitude, because it gave us a way to very quickly tap into, hey, look, we just got to say this to each other. And it comes from when I was growing up, I spent every summer with my grandma in New Mexico, and we'd cook, and we'd walk, and we'd watch TV. But there was always a moment, well, not always, but many times a moment, uh, where she would say, you know, Cindy, let's have a really deeper conversation. And she would say to me, you be frank, and I'll be earnest. <laughs> Who remembers the cartoon? Come on. Oh, thank God. OK, good. Uh, but yeah, so it was just a beautiful cue phrase for us to just drop into something that was just so much more kind of like, look, let's really kind of talk that through. So I brought that into the, into the culture as well. And then we, really? Oh, OK. Get ready. Three minutes. All right. Uh, we had an amazing events team. Uh, they were phenomenal at uh, putting on different programs, uh, putting different rituals together, and we really stood upon all of that. We had a huge yearly event called Full Spectrum. We brought 800 people together where we did a day, and we anchored on one question for the entire day and pulled it through for the entire year. This was no trivial task. In 2015, we anchored an attitude of gratitude. When we anchored an attitude of gratitude, we did everything we could to get everyone completely focused on this for the entire year. We did the t-shirts, we, we did gratitude written in every language in the world in the venue that we were at. We did gratitude stones, we did gratitude candles. We did an app, what are you grateful for? We did everything to start bringing this to life for a felt sense of gratitude of when folks were really able to share that with each other. After Full Spectrum, to pull this theme through the entire year, what we did was we showed up at all of our all hands with the same stage that we had put together at Full Spectrum. So it was conjuring up these memories for people, for them to remember what it felt like, what those talks were about, what did they learn, what were they trying to do. And we brought all that language forward. I had an amazing team. All of these people had gotten into these roles. These were not their day jobs. These were like volunteer-only roles to help the community explore gratitude together. We had a group called Community Champions. A hundred people volunteered their time to be part of this movement, to help us get into making it the best place to work for each other. So this notion of creating a great place to work is absolutely and cannot hinge on one individual. 
And through the WISHI, what I was really building was an entire movement so that every day, everybody came into work asking themselves, what can I do today to make this a great place to work for myself and for those around me? So really tapping into the beauty of the network. Second year, attitude of gratitude. What was gonna be our theme at Full Spectrum? We absolutely weren't done. We go with attitude of gratitude, the sequel. We dive even deep, folks thought I was crazy. They're like, the sequel, can't you have a new theme? Absolutely not. We're diving in way deeper. Felt sense of gratitude. I spend uh, 20 minutes leading 800 people through gratitude cheers, which hopefully I'll have time for. Uh, I want to show you how to do that. Our second year, we dig into the science of gratitude, and we find that everything we've been doing is absolutely proven in the science. Saying thank you, running workshops about writing thank you notes, um, showing up and using the right language, or just being present to what amazing things your colleagues have done, and that felt sense of saying thank you but also receiving a thank you. It turns out we're incredibly humble people and it's pretty hard for us to receive that genuine thank you. So we would help people understand how to even receive the thank you. So the benefits that we realized in this journey was that we actually stayed together. We answered this question, should I stay or should I go? We, and I can tell that this was resonating not only for our folks we had, but for new folks coming in. So we hired 10 amazing new people per month in what some would claim was the most competitive labor market probably in the world. Our employee engagement went up 20%. And as I shared with you, this was an incredibly tumultuous time. We were hiring people, we were moving jobs, but we were holding it together and actually getting better and folks felt great about being there. Uh, last year, where we, were, we were ranked number three best place to work by Computer World, which was phenomenal. Folks love that external validation. And since I've left, I've been told that attitude of gratitude definitely lives on. So what am I doing now? Well, here I am, running out of time, got it. Um, uh, but I'm sharing this story, and as I shared with you in the beginning, I'm excited to take this version of my wishy and begin to spread uh, the news to everybody about how it can be done, what it feels like, and why it's so important to do this. When you look at the engagement data from the Gallup survey, about 51% of people are not engaged at work, 16% are actively disengaged, this is the time that we must rise as leaders and we must really bring our best selves in order to conjure this community around gratitude to make this a great place for everyone to want to come every day. To that end, I'm co-founding a company whose mission and vision is about igniting humanity's capacity to help each other. Stay tuned for more on that. And um, my last four pieces of advice are this, super fast. Uh, is it possible? It's absolutely possible. It's more than possible. You have to go do this if you're a leader in the organization. Your people need it from you, they expect it from you, and they will help you tap into their passion to create a great place to work for each other. It does require investment. It's gonna take a little bit of time. It's gonna take some money. You're gonna need to get that support that support framework in place. It is a journey. I didn't flip a switch. I had to start with why are you here, and four years later, got to attitude of gratitude. So be, just be prepared for the cadence and the drumbeat that you're gonna have to create in order to make this possible. And it is incredibly inspiring. In the toughest of times, I can guarantee you, nobody thought I was gonna hit a lever that said gratitude. Right, I could have hit, leaders hit all kinds of levers, but this was the right one in the right moment for what we were trying to get done. So with that, let me lead you in a gratitude cheer. Here's how it goes, if you uh, give me one, uh, 30 seconds. Um, so the way it goes is this, I made this up, so it's very original, I'm gonna trademark it. Um, so I'm gonna yell, say it out loud, and you're gonna yell back at me, gratitude, and then we're gonna clap three times. So in all disclosure, I'm a UCLA Bruin. This is a little bit like an eight clap. 
any Bruins. Uh, so let's practice one time, and then we're going to give it a go. Are we ready? All right. Say it out loud. Gratitude. That's better than everybody's ever done it. OK, so here we go. <laughs> We're going to send out a gratitude for today. Um, my personal gratitude is that I've had the opportunity to share this story with you. Um, I told my daughters this morning, this is going to be a great day. And um, so thank you for that opportunity. And just gratitude to all the speakers for sharing their wisdom, their practice, their energy, their highs, their lows, to give us that, um, that energy that we need to go out and start to make this happen for so many others, whether it's at home, it's in community, it's at work, it's in our lives. So with that, say it out loud. Gratitude. Thank you.